Welcome everyone. I'm in Florence at the world's most important menswear exhibition, PT Womo number 104. It's all about sartorialism here. But let's see what people actually know about sewing. Come on. I'm here again with Guy Bo and his uh, lovely wife Angelique. Hello. Um, you may know the, those two from a uh, previous Pity video. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? How was your journey? It was great. Yeah, we came here a few days before Pity started. So as, as, usual. as usual, like we do, we like to settle in. and. So you know the drill. Can you walk us through your outfits? Mine is like a little sailor inspired outfit. It's by Lena Hoshek. I love her style because she has like, she does incorporate a lot of like vintage inspired looks into like a modern design and she she's uh, Austrian right yes she's Austrian mm -hmm. from Vienna yeah I think I know Lino she's Shek. very talented yeah, yeah. yeah very talented and this was the 2016, this was from 2016 collection right collection or yeah. 17 I don't yeah. remember but I got it yeah several years ago uh, these are actually my wedding shoes <laughs> ah. <laughs> I wanted to get some white Mm -hmm. Low heels because I like heels, but walking around pity in mm -hmm. high heels, it's not going to happen. They are like more off-white than yep. plain yeah. white. That's exactly. why. Exactly. It works so well. So your outfit, walk us through that. The suit, three yeah. pieces suit, is like uh, from a Polish brand mm -hmm. from Dansk uh, called Ir Garniture. Okay. Cool. Uh, I've been working with them like for the last two years. Again, it was a mix between us, you know, like Miami kind of seaside, casino, you know, 50s vibes. Polo by Kamesi, mm -hmm. uh, and shoes by uh, Mario Bima. Hat. In the hat, yeah. Good question, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and a new watch by Chapal. Oh, nice. Then one more thing, you know, since Pity and especially Our Bubble is so much in, about sartorialism, I thought this year I could do something special, mm -hmm. um, finding out what people actually know about sewing. So I brought some tools. Can ah. you hold that for a minute, please? <laughs> I want to know if you can actually like recognize those tools. Okay. So, I mean, obviously these are scissors. Yeah. Yes. Do you know what kind of scissors these are? Yeah, for sure. They're shears. I can't remember the name yeah, of it. You have I to have cut those, special actually. fabrics with that, but you know, thanks to the crane. It finishes yeah. it well, off. Yeah, right. It, it uh, finishes off the fabric. Prevents the fraying. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Pinking, uh, pinking, pinking shears. shears. That's yes. right. Brilliant. Oh. Brilliant. Like, brilliant. I have those. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, well, excellent. Thank you for, for your time. I, have, I hope you have a great pity. Uh, Thank you. Maybe we'll meet in January again. So I'm here with my old friend Shaban from Scotland. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. It's amazing to be back here. <laughs> what a pleasure. That's cool. I mean, it's like a class reunion. It really is. Just seeing people from all those years ago and hanging out together again and seeing how much people have changed. Because I certainly have changed a lot. And I think you have as well, speaking about your journey and how tailoring changes everything as you mature. It's, it's really cool to see. So, I mean, since you already, uh, you know, are in one of my videos, you know the drill. Walk us, walk us through your outfit. Sure. So almost everything is vintage. My style started three, four years ago with exploring tailoring. It was very South Italian style, uh, lots of breaking up of combinations. But then I fell in love with the Wild West and cowboys, and I watched a lot of the cowboy movies. So I slowly incorporated this into my, into my tailoring. So now I do like what I call sartorial cowboy. Mm -hmm. So the hat is from a vintage store. It's a resistol from America. The boots are handmade in Mexico. Um, I bought the spurs as well because they're quite fun. They, they make a nice noise. I feel quite badass. Yeah. Uh, these I got from a woman from America in Glasgow. The jacket's actually high street. The shirt is vintage from Lee, another kind of tailoring American cowboy brand. The tie is vintage. The trousers are also vintage. They're from a tailor in South Korea. I brought some sewing tools. 
Can Fantastic. you hold the mic of for, course, a, for of a minute? So I want to know if you can recognize what they actually do or what they're called. Oh, this is a right? game call I know. <laughs> okay, we, we uh, know what this is. Is this for the chalk? To sharpen yes, the chalk? Okay, yes, I know this one. Up, I've seen a lot of Italians using these ones. They're really cool. They're satisfying as hell. Excellent. Okay, not yeah, bad. Well, thank you for your time. Pleasure great to always. see you again. Great to see you again. <laughs> PT's fantastic. Good to be here. Have a great one. Thank you so much. I'm here again with some old friends, Michelle and Andy from California. Um, you're both in IT, which I found brilliant <laughs> when you mentioned that the first time. Um, so how's, how's IT going? Because when I studied, uh, people from IT are not, you know, known for dressing that well. So how did you, you know, take the other course? Well, uh, the company that I work for has no dress code. And so I just dress how I feel like. And, uh, and it mostly looks like this. And, and I'm very fortunate. Nobody pays any attention. I but I think in, in Silicon Valley, there's, you know, it is, you're right, it is a much ca more casual approach to dress and fashion, yeah. but yeah. I think, uh, you know, you wear what you want. Uh, you know, the clothes that you wear tell the story about you, and this is the story, these are the stories that we want to tell about ourselves, and other people's stories are different, and that's perfectly fine. You know the drill? You have been in one of my videos, so can you walk us through your outfits? I am in a Burberry uh, skirt. I forget who the top is, but this is uh, a scarf from, uh, a silk scarf from Elisabetta. Kate Spade bag and Jennifer Fisher earrings. Cartier watch, <laughs> which is a gift from my lovely husband, uh, and some Wellendorf, uh, you may be familiar with them in Germany, Wellendorf. Uh, Willendorf. Vi yeah. Vi Willendorf, yeah. Willendorf, okay. And David Yerman. Cool. My suit is by Divish Bespoke in, in uh, Costa Mesa, California, uh, from a Dugdale linen that was very kindly gifted to me by Dugdale. Shoes are Edward Green. My hat is by Optimo in Chicago, and the shirt is uh, a bespoke um, pajama shirt uh, by Bud, cut by James McCausland. Mm -hmm. Pocket Square is from uh, Francesca Serafin, so it's a uh, uh, Serafina uh, Pocket Square. So this year, I want to find out how much people know about sewing, actually. Oh my goodness. So I brought some, th uh, okay. some things, and I want to see if you I recognize okay. what, they, what they are called or what they do. Okay. I'm grabbing something from the from the bag. Do you know what this is? That's a sex toy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll have to edit that one out. It's uh um, Oh maybe we don't. It's uh it's a marking wheel, but I don't know the actual name of it. I don't know the name of it either. It's uh, for on the pattern, right? From, yeah. from the uh, paper of the pattern onto the fabric. Yep, or from uh, one piece of like a paper pattern to the next pattern uh, ah. piece of pattern. It's a copying wheel because you copy. basically ah. copy the pattern. Okay. Cool. But uh, very, good, very good, very good. Thank you, that's it. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Brilliant. You're welcome. I love Thank that. That was awesome. I found him. The man of the hour, the legend, Damien Broderick. How are you? I am very, very well. It's so cool that you uh, made it to, uh, to Florence. Funny thing is, you're from Ireland, but you moved to, to Italy like a couple of months ago, right? Yeah, yeah, almost three months ago now. Maybe one of the reasons is that your Instagram account blew up from like 40k to 1.2 million in uh, two or three months. Yeah, yeah, in like 90 days. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it went, it went it skyrocketed. So Italy was like a nice escape. So I moved to Umbria, which is basically the countryside. Um, but it's also really easy to get to like Rome on like by two hours on a train or Florence two hours on a train. So it's and you're also running a YouTube channel, vlogging. Ooh, trying. Uh, running, walking a YouTube channel might be the better, <laughs> better use. <laughs> walking. R running a channel is, is difficult. That's a hard platform to crack. But you're basically like blogging about uh, the La Dolce Vita. Uh, what's it? La Dolce Vita. La Dolce yes. Vita, now in Italy. Um, yeah, trying to, yeah. As people think that I live this really exciting life, but on a day to day, I just eat pizza and drink wine. Um, so it's, like, I don't know how many vlogs you can make about that, but. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, we'll it's, see, it's we'll tough. see. We will see, we will see. Brilliant. So, can you walk us through your outfit? Like, uh, what you're wearing, what are you wearing? I'm wearing a brown penny loafer from Mora Creations. Uh, I'm wearing a navy dress sock, because they match my trousers. They're from the London Sock Co. These are made-to-measure trousers by a Dublin tailor called Bomb Brothers. They're in VBC cloth, uh, really Italian style, high rise, uh, extended waistband, double pleats, all that sort of jazz. Um, then I have this kind of cricket slash tennis jumper from an Italian brand called Barracuda. This is just a bandana that I've tied like a, a four in hand knot, so it keeps it nice and tidy. Uh, Seiko GMT, TBD eyewear glasses. Since Pitti Uomo is so much about sectorialism, mm. this year I'm 
trying to find out what people actually know about sewing. So I brought some tools and I oh, dear want Lord. you to recognize <laughs> what, what their names are and what they do actually. Okay, okay. edit this bit out. <laughs> <laughs> it might be very weird to someone who's, who never sewed anything. So is, oh, you said sewn. Yeah, or tailoring, or generally. So is this for the chalk? Yeah. To get it into a point? Absolutely, yes. brilliant. Yeah, it's, the, it's basically a tailor's chalk sharpener. Yeah. Yeah, cool. That's Sweet. It. <laughs> Can we uh, finish off with your famous of course. clip, clip, clap? Oh, that's a bad one. Oh. <laughs> Sweaty hands. That was a good one. There we go. And that's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, bro. Oh, <laughs> so, I am here with... Aaron Jimenez. Where do you come from? From Mexico, Mexico City. And are you here at Pity like for like because you're an enthusiast or do you have a business interest here? Yeah, yeah, I'm a brand consultant and communication strategy for tailor shops in Mexico and Latin America. So I'm here just to learn more for my clients and to embrace the tailor made in Mexico because I believe that the work in my country and my and Latin America works uh, for, for uh, the same kind level for all the world. So I try to be uh, the, the ambassador for, for Latin American tailor, tailoring, yeah. Okay, so can you walk us through your outfit? What are you wearing? Who are you wearing? Ah, wonderful, yeah. Well, uh, my jacket is from a Mexican tailor called uh, Memo Villegas, a uh, bespoke tailor. The shirt is from a shirt maker, Mexican shirt maker called Evals. The trousers are for a Mexican tailor called uh, Oscar Torres. Mm -hmm. uh, the jewelry is from a Mexican uh, handcrafted brand of jewelry called Urblack. Mm -hmm. um, the tie is from Mes Mesa Blues. And the shoes? Ah, from Bowtie, a uh, Spanish brand. Mm -hmm. The socks are from Bixel. And the uh, pocket square are from Danditi, a Spanish brand. Okay, brilliant, thank you. And I try to use a lot of contrast and colors because for me it's the way that I can show how Mex Mex Mexico is and how Mexican style is. So I like to use bold colors, but not too bold that looks uh, awkward and weird, you know. So, and I think that uh, purple and white are the best uh, combination for that goal. So I have something in my bag. For me, the most uh, interesting thing, do you know what this is? Um, yeah, this uh, works for shape the greda. Well, when you uh, draw in the yeah. in the in the fabric. Exactly, the the tailor's chalk. Yeah, yeah. I mean, brilliant. I mean. I mean, of course, uh, I'm not a native speaker either, and um, if I hadn't brought those, maybe I wouldn't know the terms either. Yeah. But you know what they do, so brilliant, thank you. Yeah, three actually, out of three. Yeah, actually I, I'm also I'm a tailor apprentice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because I want to promote Mexican tailoring. I want to learn more about how tailor made is. So I'm not a tailor, obviously, yeah. I do other things, but if I talk about it, I need to know how things are made. So I have three obviously. years as a, as a tailor apprentice. So that's, that's cool. why I know the, the yeah. things. <laughs> that's really, really cool. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Um, have a great pity. Yeah. And we'll see each other. Yeah, of course. Next year, hopefully. Of course. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm here with Jared Acquire. Cool. Uh, what do you do for a living? What's, what's your reason to be a pity? I'm actually a, a cobbler at the moment, but I've been in menswear for the past 10 years as a brand consultant. Uh, a menswear advisor and stylist. Of course, due to COVID, I've been away for the past five years, so I've come back to re-network and reconnect, uh, see friends and see how the market's going. You had quite the journey, I heard. You know, you're not from here? You're... No, no, all the way from Australia, so it's a big 24-hour flight. Uh, different weather too, winter back home, summer here, crossover. And as far as I can say, you're also more into the vintage side of things, right? Definitely love vintage, and uh, my big thing is knowing the heritage of something. I, it's not about style, always for me. I want to know why the design details are made the way they are. You know, the proportions of things are very accurate for me. Uh, and that's yeah, pretty much what I look for and what I love. I love the history of it all. Brilliant. Yeah, I love that too. Yeah. Uh, can you walk us through your outfit, like piece by piece? What are you wearing? Who yeah. are you wearing? So this is a company from the UK called mm -hmm. Lane Forty Five. Uh, owned by a guy, I think he's from Pakistan maybe, or around that area, but his whole family has a huge heritage of tailoring 
but they don't use mechanical or electric machines. They use all hand-powered machines. Okay. And he goes around and he finds dead stock fabrics, which this is a dead stock linen. Uh, and he kind of procures his own versions of different, I guess, different designs from the 20s, 30s and everything like that. So this is his interpretation of like a late 1920s, early 1930s suit, three-piece. And it's got like a... Oh, that's a cool, yeah, that's a cool detail. Yeah. Club collar shirt, got from a Korean band called uh, Boogie Holiday, mm -hmm. which they uh, started off um, with another company called Wild and Trash. And then they kind of mix together with their different styles and they have, I guess you could say it's not just strictly a vintage style, but they mix it in with new modern pieces and just making things a lot more wearable I guess for their culture and the, the demographics. This is actually a bow tie from a, a French brand, something Papillion. Sorry, Michael, yeah. I forget. <laughs> I think it's a, the butterfly in French, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I just, I didn't want to wear a cravat with this suit because it's going to be too puffy. So this kind of bow tie tied onto its side, pushed down like a tie, seemed to be a nice fit. Alden loafers. Mm -hmm. Nice, comfortable, not going to give me blisters and sore feet while I'm walking through the heat. Yeah, Get on my feet all day. Yeah. yeah. The glasses are vintage. I do not know the brand. Mm -hmm. I literally found them in a uh, vintage store back in Melbourne and I was just looking for something that uh, was not too dark and not too bright either. And the hat is from Alley Cat, who's a hat maker in America. Mm -hmm. And he's been in the hat industry for 40 plus years now and he makes hats by hand he stitches by hand he doesn't use machines for anything everything apart from your steamers and things like that he does everything by hand which was uh, I thought I love that concept if I have some things in my in my bag I mean since you already mentioned that you have a background in tailoring you yeah. probably know everything that I now pull out of my bag but oh, uh, maybe you, you can never know it could be different do you know what this is I mean obviously yeah, they're scissors pink, they're pink and shears yeah Pink and shears is when you when you you cut the end off a fabric so it stops it from fraying. Yeah, brilliant. pretty much. Thank you. It's an easy way than having <laughs> to sew it off. Absolutely. Off, off the end. Absolutely. Uh, I, have, uh, I have a pair at home. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your time. It was a real pleasure to meet you and to interview you. Have a great pity. Yeah. You too. Thank you. Pleasure. I am here with Monica and, and Bart. <laughs> brilliant. You guys are from Poland. And what's, uh, what's your doing here at, at PT? Uh, now we are showing uh, a new project from Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't uh, tell you the name yet, uh, but in September everything will be clear. So now we're just showing this new outfit from uh, our thing, our so, design. So you are active in the fashion business? <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we design some things, you know, uh, jackets, uh, trousers, all that stuff. So it's our hobbies. Where's uh, the, the shop or the brand base? Uh, exactly. It's still uh, a secret. Uh, ah. we'll, we can tell uh, everything but the center brand. So it's somewhere in Poland? Yeah, somewhere okay. in Poland. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So, can you walk us through your outfits? Who are you wearing? What are you wearing? Today I have uh, Martes. Mm -hmm. And my outfit is uh, Suso. Suso ah, Plus. Suso, Suso. Yeah. yeah, cool. <laughs> um, I don't know, the pocket square, the. I, I see you. I, I see you wearing a Ray Ban. Poszetka? Yes, I think it's Poszetka. Poszetka. Poszetka it's, also, <laughs> it's also like a Polish brand, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. From the bottom, uh, there are uh, shoes from this brand that I cannot talk about ah, yet. Ah, I see. And uh, it's also about the trousers. The shirt is shoe supply. Yeah. Uh, it's a basic vintage tank top from I don't know the name of, my, of brand even. Uh, and our uh, jacket. Also from top secret uh, European or? Ah. fabric and that's all. Okay, okay. Brilliant. Thank you. I have a, my, my, my magic bag. Okay. Do you know what this is? It's yeah. not the kinky stuff. It's not the, it's not the kinky <laughs> but it looks like so. <laughs> okay, so uh, it is for uh, making the holes in the leather pieces uh, to just uh, yeah. niche. The, uh, the to, need, uh, yeah, to pre mark the, the stitches, yeah. Yeah. You, can, yeah. you can use that between for the, yeah, between the holes. Absolutely. Yeah. But you, you can also, like, uh, it's a copying wheel, so you can also, like, uh, copy patterns from fabric ah, to okay. paper or mm -hmm. from paper to paper uh, without damaging the fabric or the, or the paper, of course. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay, thank, thank you so you. much. That's it. Have a, have a great oh. pity. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
I am here with Pink of the Ton, or just Jack Sharples, to be honest, is what I used to go by. <laughs> <laughs> and you're from? Uh, I'm from Scotland, I'm close to Glasgow. Originally, I'm from the north of England, but I've been in Scotland now for a good 20 years, so I consider that my home. Are you in the fashion business? Uh, no, I wish I was, I'm, I, but I'm a barber at Vive Trade, so I spend most days making other people look good rather than looking good myself. So, obviously, you're more into the, the vintage aesthetic. Tell me more about that. Um, I don't actually know. I, I, I kind of sway between it. I, predominantly, I like the kind of classic periods from like 1900s through to the 30s, even the 40s, 50s, and 60s. I, I find some inspiration from. But um, um, it's honest, it's kind of a little bit awkward because you're probably the main man who inspired me to to move into that sort of direction. Okay. I always kind of liked my tailor and my suits, but maybe in that sort of slightly more modern sense where I was probably wearing trousers that were a little bit too tight, a little bit too low waisted. Yeah, my wife's really into her kind of fashion as well. She does a little bit of sewing, she does a bit of dressmaking. She's probably the more well known name in the, the Instagram social media name. She's Dear Tally. Um, um, uh, can you walk us through your outfit? Uh, what are you wearing? Who are you wearing? My shoes? They're just a, a, a vintage. I, I don't I honestly don't know when they're from, maybe in the 1920s, 30s, and they're currently killing my feet, I'm not going to lie, um, but worth it because they look good. Uh, the, the suit that's uh, now known as Cathcart, used to be Simon James Cathcart when I purchased it, kind of 1930s, 40s reproduction band, who do a lot of stuff that I do like. Um, the shirt, I believe, if I remember correctly, is Chester Cordite, a brand who makes beautiful suits, of, one of which I still want to acquire, and yeah, really nice shirts and little other accessories. The tie again, just another, I think, second-hand thing that I've picked up either in a vintage store or on eBay or something like that. Same goes with the tie clip. The watch, I think, is a 1930s thing, cheapo thing, but I like old stuff and it, it looked good. You also uh, spotting a collar pin? Yeah, yeah the collar pin. I actually just picked that up right before I came to Pitya. I'm not sure if I'm loving it or hating it because it doesn't tend to want to stay on this one. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, um, just another second-hand vintage piece. I think I just got that off eBay. So the glasses are a brand from Glasgow, actually. They're called Iola. I kind of first discovered them because um, they produced the glasses for Tommy Shelby on ah, Peaky Blinders and nice. I'm like if, if it's good enough for Tommy Shelby they're good enough for me which are actually these glasses sitting here as well. Do you know what this is? Not a clue. It yeah. looks like the thing that I use for the hacksaw to help cut through cornicing but again I don't think I, don't, I think we're talking about clothing here. So. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's a, it's a um, um, sharpener for Taylor's chalk. Oh, okay. Because you want to draw thin lines, you know. Makes sense. Fair enough. <laughs> so that went terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> But brilliant. Thank you. No Thank problem. you so much. No, it's been a pleasure, man. I am here with Michael Hallinger, aka Tintin Fellow on Instagram. And you are from? England. In <laughs> southern England. A uh, little county called uh, Hampshire. I live in a small village, so uh, that's where I'm from. Are you uh, in the fashion bro fashion business? Uh, absolutely not, no. I'm a gardener. That's my day job. So the day before I came here, I was with my, uh, with my team digging a th thousand holes to plant, uh, a, thousand plant a load holes. of thousand plants. So, uh, And how did you get from gardening to classic menswear? Well, I was probably in, in classic menswear before I got into gardening. I mean, I got an interest in clothes when I was about 15. I remember my first pair of shoes that I sort of chose for myself with these sort of patent leather, well, they were plastic, very shiny sort of um, dress shoes. And I, I'd wear those with jeans and stuff. And then I got into sort of more sort of formal wear. So I, you know, sometimes wear a tweed jacket and a tie. Uh, but other days I'd be in baggy jeans and a Stone Roses t-shirt and beads. And just, I've always sort of just worn what I wanted to really, sort of gone my own way. You know, I, I get, um, I see something or I, suddenly something pops into my head and I think, oh yeah, actually I need, I need to have some solar air tassel loafers or, or whatever it is. I need to have a, you know, flight jacket or... And now, can you walk us through your outfit? Like walk talking about well. menswear that much? This pair of old linen trousers, uh, a linen shirt, and this jacket I had made inspired by what Cary Grant wears in To Catch a Thief, the classic 1955 film where he's with Grace Kelly down in the south of France and he just has these iconic looks in that film. It's just an online tailor, you know, gold buttons. So this is from a, a company called Soho Scarves in Britain. Uh, so I know, I know the owner, he, he's a nice guy. He's, he's um, you know, sent me stuff in the past and he's just really good quality silk. I've, I've before described myself as a sartorial magpie. So I take <laughs> things from here, there and everywhere. You know what this is? Yes, that's the thing when you're making pastry and you cut it out, <laughs> uh, but very small pastry for dolls. 
you, you could you could do that, yeah, uh, sure. It's a thing, I've got sharp things, so it's, I don't tell me. It's a copying wheel, so you can like copy patterns from fabric to right. paper or from paper to paper okay. without damaging the fabric or the paper. Okay, yeah. Yes. Thank well, you, thank you for your time. Well, thank you. It <laughs> was a fun part. Thanks for talking to me. <laughs> well, enjoy the rest of the show. And for my German peeps, I'm making a second German Pity Uomo video, finding the Germans, or at least the German-speaking folk at Pity Uomo. Have a look up there. That's a wrap. That was PT Womo 104. Make sure to subscribe to watch some of the interviews uncut or me describing what I was wearing at PT Womo 104. Stay loyal, stay tuned. Bye bye.